Okay, so um, I just want us to think a little bit more about the properties of the accessibility relation. Um, we've seen three conditions that we can apply, but what effects do these conditions have on our world diagrams? Well, let's look, for example, at the system B, which is uh, K plus reflexivity plus symmetry. There's the uh, sim symbol symbolic um, depiction of those two uh, conditions. Um, okay, so let's say we take three worlds and we have um, well, uh, W1 is accessible from WO, W2 is accessible from W1. Well, um, given reflexivity and symmetry, what can we derive about these things? Uh, and just to make this easier, I'm, I'm putting the names of the world inside the world. Usually I would put them outside, but I'm going to be drawing a lot of arrows in this video, so they're going inside. Okay, so, so what, can we, what can we derive? Well, it's pretty simple. Um, we know because we have reflexivity that every world accesses itself. Uh, and symmetry just means that we draw an arrow back from each world to the one before it. So, um, just like that. If, if if W1 accesses W2, then W2 accesses W1. It's pretty simple. And um, say if we drew another world, W3, from, from uh, W1, well, uh, again, we just have reflexivity, it accesses itself, and it accesses W1. It... Um, it's 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 nothing too complicated. I don't think any of that. Let's take a, a different structure. In this case, we have uh, W1 accessible from WO and W2 accessible from WO. Uh, in this case, again, reflexivity and um, an arrow from the new world back to the old one. Um, we can see that if we were to draw like another world, say from WO. Uh, well, again, it would look pretty much the same as these two. Well, it would look exactly the same as these two. We'd have uh, an arrow for reflexivity and just an arrow back to to WO. Um, again, you draw another world from W2. These are all these are all going to look the same. So, I mean, if we, you can see that if you were to extend the tree further, say, if you were to extend it from W4, that wouldn't have any impact on on W1, WO, W3, any of the worlds up here, it's 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 not going to have any impact on them. So uh, they're they're pretty simple those those kinds of trees. Uh, I think that they're quite easy. So um, what about S4, which is K plus reflexivity plus transitivity? Okay, well again, let's say we take um, W1 accessible from WO, W2 accessible from W1. What can we derive about this tree? Well, first of all, all the worlds access themselves because we have reflexivity. Um, but now look, since we have W1 accessible from WO, and then we have W2 accessible from W1, well, since we have transitivity, we can derive that W2 is accessible from WO, like that. And what happens if we add a new world to this? Say we add a new world from W2. Okay, so look at, uh, for example, W1 here. W1 accesses W2 and W2 accesses W3, so because we have transitivity, W1 must access W3. Um, but look at WO. WO accesses W2, which accesses W3, and so that also accesses W3. Uh, and if we were to draw another world from here, uh, some other world from W2 or from W3 or whatever, it would be accessed by WO. So uh, they sort of, you can kind of see how, how that works. Um, let's uh, consider another structure. Let's consider this kind of structure. What can we derive here? Well, actually, we can only, we can't really derive anything with transitivity here. Transitivity doesn't add anything to this, to this structure whatsoever. We've got the reflexivity, um, but we, we, there's nothing, there's no, there's no way we can use transitivity here. Uh, and actually, you can see that if you keep drawing worlds from WO, then you won't be able to do anything with uh, transitivity. But if we were to add a world from W1, say, uh, well, then that would be accessible from WO, because WO accesses W1, which accesses W3. So again, fairly simple stuff, I think. How about S5? Now we've got reflexivity, symmetry, and transitivity. Um, 
Okay then. Uh, let's uh, let's let's take a look at this for example. Well, in this case, because we have uh, symmetry, we can easily see that each weld will access the one before it. And again, because we have transitivity, we know that WO must access W2. Um, but since we've got WO accessing W2, we now know due to symmetry that W2 must access WO, right? Because we've got, we've got symmetry, WO accesses W2, so W2 must access WO. Okay, so let's say that we, uh, we draw a new world in here. So we draw it from, from WO. What can we derive about this? Well, we know because we have symmetry that uh, W3 accesses WO. And now we also, let's, let's just take a look at this. We've got W1 accessing WO and WO accesses W3. Okay, W1, WO, W3. It goes like that. So because we've got transitivity, that means that W1 accesses W3. And then because we have symmetry, W3 goes back to W1. And precisely the same reasoning applies to W2 here. Look, W2 accesses W1, W1 accesses W3. So because of transitivity, we have W2 and W3 accessing each other. Um, now, I know that this is starting to look obscenely complicated, but there's actually an easy way to remember what's going on here. In S5, every world accesses every other world. Um, it doesn't matter what world you draw, you can draw anything you like from any, any place you like. And if you work through it, you'll find that every single world has access to every single other world. Uh, and this means that the, um, the accessibility relation in S5 is universal. Uh, every world accesses every other world. Um, and we can check this with a, with a different kind of structure. Uh, say we've got this structure. Again, symmetry is easy, you just draw two arrows back. Um, but now look, we've got... We've got W1, which accesses WO, and WO accesses W2. And so since we have transitivity, W1 must access W2. And then uh, conversely, for the same reason, you know, you've got, and for symmetry, you've got W2 accessing W1 and, and so on. Uh, and if we were to add some new world, W3, well, we can see that, you know, W2 must access it since you've got, since it accesses WO, which accesses W3, and then W3 accesses W2 due to symmetry, or you could do due to transitivity. Actually, you could you could do it either way. Um, the same reasoning applies to W1. Uh, so you've got every world accessing every other world there. Uh, no matter what you do, no matter what worlds we add or where we put them in S in S5, uh, our accessibility relation is universal. Okay, that's all I wanted to talk about in this video. I just wanted to make sure you had a kind of good grasp of of the accessibility relation and how it affects our trees. Uh, in the next videos we'll start actually using trees in arguments. But S5 is um, kind of quite an important system because uh, of, of how the accessibility relation is, is universal. Uh, it's, it's quite a, an interesting system for that. Um, okay, thanks for watching. Goodbye.